Welcome back to the Independent Investor Channel. It's easy to get caught up in the um, recession in um, specific stocks, especially this one. It's difficult to keep your eyes on the prize. It's difficult to focus on um, company improvements, company um, the successes, um, and it it always is unfortunately overshadowed by the stock price, the stock price. I think there's a lot of decisions going on right now based on that. I think a lot of positives that are with the company are unfortunately overshadowed by uh, the current stock price. Just hanging out at these levels. My purchases last week uh, came uh, at around the 116 level. I disclosed, disclosed that. Um, and no promises to suggest that it can't go lower. If it does, I'll be accumulating more shares. That That's just me. Uh, I don't expect you to follow my lead. Uh, I expect that uh, after this project is all well and done, uh, I would imagine that the few who have been brave enough to, to follow uh, on this journey uh, will own a, a company that is um, looking to revolutionize the Class 8 space. Now, can they do that? Um, I, I think the theme of this video and where I want to take your perspective on on where we are right now is something that I think is being missed, uh, and it's being missed in a big way. Um, if you pay attention to um, investing from the investors that really don't follow the crowd and focus on stop soft spots in the market. We currently have one alive and well right now, and nobody's talking about it. Um, you can blame highly on all you want for a recessed stock price. But might I remind you that the micro cap space in general um, is, is and has been thrown out for a long, long time. Um, there is no credit whatsoever which puts these companies that where they would have needed time and would have been provided that ample time in the market uh, in, in a different market, let's say the latter half of last decade, they are not being provided that favor. And companies are being reassessed uh, in the marketplace, some, if not most, unfairly some fairly and i think this washout is super necessary i really do i think it's necessary for those who maybe thought that investing was a game for those that thought investing was easy uh, for those that um, misconstrued their own capability in financial markets uh, for me calmly marching on and i've shared this i shared it on my live friday live stream i feel no different now than what I did before outside of the fact that I am super, super excited to be where we are now with the prospects going forward, um, as opposed to being disappointed about where we have come from. I really want you to take that to heart. I really do. And as we work through this video, I'm going to show you that I believe we are marching toward multiple catalysts and I don't want you to take my word for it. Uh, I want you to kick over to Hylion.com and look at their last 11 slides or so that they presented on the Q2 call. It is, um, it has this information disclosed. And I, I find this interesting because a lot of people are saying one way or the other that they're not going to do this and they're not going to do that. They're not going to do this and they're not going to do that. When all the while, Hylion is very, very um, carefully and diligently uh, communicating with their investors through these um, through these releases on what they intend on doing. Now, one thing I didn't mention on last week's video, I will clean up this small delta from the release. It was in the interview, actually, with J.P. Morgan. Um when he Thomas Healy was being pressed on MSRP and Thomas talked about, look, right now we feel comfortable with releasing a less than 400,000. That's with the credit and incentive uh, baked into the um, to to the equation for the MSRP. And he did allude to the previous projections 
being way off. And it was the first time that I had ever heard Thomas Healy talk about what was um, being projected back in 2019, 2018, 2020, when the original investor presentation came forward. And I don't know if anybody else picked up on that. Hopefully that they did that that was kind of an acknowledgement to making um, uh, presumptions about where they would potentially be with the MSRP uh, and not anticipating such a, a, a huge shift in the industry as a whole and how we would be looking at the supply chain issues and the effects over the industry here in 2023. Um, to affect the, that MSRP. I, I thought that was a, a careful, but responsible acknowledgement. I was actually happy to hear it because I've been scrutinizing on that data that was released. And I was glad that um, that was kind of acknowledged about that might not have been the best way of doing it for the reasons that they really didn't have a whole lot of uh, understanding of when the ERX could potentially come to uh, commercialization. So I thought that was a pretty cool acknowledgement. And I thought I would share those insights with you guys on the, on the weekly highly on video, but the theme of this video is going to be uh, expect the unexpected. And you know, what's funny about un unexpected is everything that I am going to talk about uh, is not presumptuous on my part. It is as disclosed by Hylion, uh, and I am conveying that through the message here with my following. Now, before we get started, I, I kind of want to set the stage a little bit for who I am, what I bring to the table, why I'm doing this project, and why you should join the movement here uh, on either the independent investor or become a steward through Hylion.com, sign up for their newsletter, really become kind of a steward of this. I think there's multiple things here at play. Um, I think there are cross currents that are probably fighting this initiative. Um, I, I think that um, the slow to evolution is probably a, a, a partially manufactured um, in that I think if Hylion were just to come out uh, guns blazing right now, I think they would fall on deaf ears anyway. So uh, a slow approach and allow things to kind of settle out, which in my assessment, things are kind of settling out a little bit more, at least on the supply chain issues. Um, I think interest rates uh, higher are going to be around higher for for a good while. I think the ability of Hylion to um, really circumnavigate this environment now and not have to aggressively seek out capital from a from a, a necessity perspective rather than an op opportunistic perspective is is huge right now in the short term uh, and whether or not that's going to pay off i'm going to talk about that in a little bit with regard to their cast position but i really want you to understand that uh, expect the unexpected means that there are disclosed catalysts that by all nature is going to happen. Okay. The reason I disclose that is because we are now sitting on a stock price that is priced for liquidation, priced as a company that will not make it, um, that will not continue to enjoy further progress on their on their their products, um, will dissolve away. Uh, and is now currently caught up with the mix of companies that, for all intents and purposes, over 90% do fail. And I think with these looming short-term catalysts, I think you're going to find here that we are on the precipice of at least having the doors open to a number of these different uh, developments with the company. Look, is it going to change the needle? I don't know. I'm not in that business anymore. <laughs> I never was really in the business. Um, my price targets for this company have never changed. I believe that the first look on this company is going to be about 150% above its SPAC uh, IPO price of $10 at $24. Uh, I, I think with the uh, the evolution of the company and adding Carno into the mix only adds uh, that many mi more hundreds of millions of dollars of value now in the company right now, not with even the press 
prospects of incorporating the revenue that the company can generate from the Carno project, because that was uh, information that we were not privy to at the um, at the inception of this project. But what we do know is fleet trials uh, will start in Q3. We are currently in Q3 now. We are in Q3 now. We are in Q3 now. So the last announcement that Hyleon uh, announced was from the beginning of the month um, that they reported on Q2 earnings. There's been a couple of really nice pieces and segments with uh, Thomas Healy um, getting out there, sharing the story, which I think is 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 good, uh, obviously not to move the needle and not to be expected to move the needle. Uh, we need results at this point, and there is certainly an undertone of calm cry in the community that you know results are going to be the only thing that moves this needle and, and all fair. Uh, like I said at the top of the program, uh, these companies are being... Uh, put in a basket of prove it. And until they can prove it, they're going to remain in the basket. They're not moving from that basket. Um, they are going to continue to deteriorate in value until they can prove that they can rise to the top uh, of the basket and escape from that basket of stocks that have have really historically been provided a little bit more uh, optimistic credit. Uh, as opposed to where we are now in a prove it story, but fleet trials to begin in Q3. Is there going to be no news that comes from that? Is there going to be no? You know, I had one comment on my last highly on video to suggest that there it would be cool to see, you know, the 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 deliveries of those first DRXs made public. Um, I don't know if they're going to move in that direction or if they're going to keep it private. I really don't know. I don't know if they're going to be reporting out or if the relationship between Hyleon and the recipients of the first uh, fleet trial vehicles are going to want to keep that information private. I, I don't know, but it's going to happen. So however way they choose to uh, roll out this program, I know it's going to happen and it should be a, a positive catalyst in moving toward what they are considering to be commercialization uh, later on this year. Okay. The next is to deliver 30 trucks by the end of 2023. We're in August, uh, almost to September here, September, October, November, December. We have four months left, four months for, for what? Uh, the stock to get cut more in half? Don't know. Don't really care. But over the next four months, I expect the unexpected. And the unexpected is results from this company in way of delivering 30 trucks by the end of 2023. If you think that that's somehow a misconstruence of the fact or a presumption on my part, this information is coming right off of Hylion.com website, and they are setting up to uh, be in the position to say, see, I told you so. Um, we declared everything that we were obligated to provide to you and no more in the investor's presentation, as well as the summary slideshow that was uh, presented on Q2. It's right there. Now, again, I come back to this beat down and probably shared sentiment across the Hylion community in suggesting this. Will it move the needle? Probably not. Now, am I being unfairly presumptuous in that? Of course I am. But the perspective that you have to come with in the investing landscape is to identify the best case scenario and the worst case scenario. We have been doled out the worst case scenario over the last three years. Why is it fair to expect that somehow it's going to change on a dime and, and, and start to become positive when the company has rolled out a lot of positive initiatives over the last three years? It hasn't been what the market's wanted to hear. Uh, it has not moved the needle. And so why is it to expect that more of the same is not going to move the needle? You know, a, a reaffirmation for me of what was declared previously that's been completely removed from their website is a, a, a reiteration of some of the old deals that were made with some of the fleets. Have all those deals just went away with Ruan? with Lafarge, um, all of those deals that they've made, you know, with the Innovation Council, you know, Wegmans was in the discussion, Schneider was in the discussion, 
you know, A and G was in the discussion, agility. I can go on and on and on and on. And this is their opportunity here for us to get some clarity on whether or not these are a mix of new customers, a reaffirmation of old customers, or if the old customers have gone away based on the recalibration of the MSRP and just, you know, have kind of died and gone a different direction. And or these 30 are all brand new customers that have been brought into the fold. Right. That's going to be a real tell for me because, you know, a lot of the hype and a lot of the the buildup is was to understand the excitement behind, you know, who that innovation council was and how that innovation council was basically partnering with Hylion uh, through these fleet trials and rollouts. And that has been removed from the website. And I don't know if it's a thing or not. You know, we talked about this founders program and white glove garbage. The only thing that I really care about is who's going to get the trucks and who is going to help provide data back on those uh, on those trucks. We have not heard anything about that. All that aside, it's going to happen. I believe that there are going to be 30 deliveries by the end of this year by what they're stating. Could they push it? Yes. Is it going to mo- move the needle? No back again to sharing with you my insights about having really level expectations about these catalysts, albeit in the face of me disclosing to you that I believe that those catalysts will happen. And with each new door that's opened up, it should open up further opportunity into next year for some of the longer term projects that Hylion has. All right. The CARB and EPA is expected. This is right off of Hylion's website. They expect to nail down that certification. I expect the finalized um, uh, certification announcement to come any time. Now, any time, does that mean November 15th? Um, Does that mean September 6th? I I, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I don't know what they mean by expected, okay? I know that it's expected within this quarter. I would presume that it would be nice to have that CARB and EPA NITS has already completed. Those three certifications would like to believe that we can get those completed and put them in our rear view mirror because now we're working with a commercially viable product that has gone through the rigor of over the road certification And that right there in and of itself should separate the gray matter to black and white in understanding that is there a chance they could fail certification? And and then the project, what, is is just a pilot program or it dissolves away all of the money in R&D that goes in, right? I don't foresee that happening. Okay, but I'm just I'm just stating, have I have I thought that the certification has taken longer than what it 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 should have or or could have? Or did I wish it was certified six months ago? Sure, sure. That's just not where we are. All that aside, we look at the facts and we look at the carbon EPA is expected to happen over the next couple of months. My promise to you when that is going to be, I can't provide to you, however, to be expected. And is that going to move the needle? Is moving from a pilot program, the Hypertruck ERX, to a commercially viable and certified product going to move the needle? Again, I would just have fair expectations and suggest that it won't with the idea that potentially we could be positively surprised. Maybe we get a little bump in the stock of 10 cents so everybody can sell the stock and it can retrace back 10 cents and we're back at the starting place again, having had the certification not in place prior to the 10 cent bump up uh, and now having the certification in place and having a commercially viable product, but having the stock price still where it was prior to the announcement. Mm -hmm. Muted expectations, I would suggest. Absolutely. I'm calmly sitting in the pocket and watching these evolutions happen over time. And I'm completely comfortable with whatever um, uh, reciprocation or whatever receipt of those 
uh, positive catalysts happen and 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 are made over the stock because I really think that these positives may in the short term have an impact on the stock price. But if anything has proved out, it has been that there has been so much selling pressure on any upward momentum that this company has been and will continue to be in a downward trajectory, if not stabilizing trajectory over the last six to eight months, to be fair, right? Very stabilizing. If you look at a long-term chart, you could probably extend that six months to, to 12 to 18 months of stabilizing at these lower levels, but they're recessed levels uh, to indicate that the stock market believes that the company is actually going to dissolve away. Okay. It's not going to exist anymore. All right. I, I find that to be um, um, a, a, an interesting observation here now where we are. Uh, I'm not going to suggest that that's wrong or right. Uh, I am a bull on the company, and I believe that some of these catalysts will start to generate some upward momentum. But whether or not it's sustained upward momentum, Hylion is going to have to do something that I'm going to share with you at the end of the video, and I'm going to double down right now. They're going to have to start to produce results. Okay, this whole fleet trial thing, the investor day presentation, yada, 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 this whole announcing the highs on collaboration and whatever dollars have gone into investing in that, you know, it's taken up an entire page out of 11. Okay, so about 9% of, of Hylion's Q2 call had the highs on presentation in it. Go to Hyzon's website and try to find the word Hylion on their entire website. I charge you to do so. All right. And I'm getting kind of tired of this, you know, reciprocation on behalf of Hylion saying, hey, Anheuser Busch is on our team. All these companies are agility, man. They're on our team. They're on our team. You go to their website, it's very, very difficult to find any information whatsoever of of these companies and i would nary up presume that i if i were to call anheuser bush and talk to an upper executive and ask if if they have ever heard of hylion they'd probably say no right i do think this is an unknown story and i think hylion sometimes uses if not throwing a lifeline to hyzon at the time trading it you know 50 60 cents um, they know each other, so why not just throw them a lifeline here and say that the big bad Hylion uh, is is partnering with them, which you know benefited Hyzon. Hyzon ran right past Hylion right after that announcement. Hylion did not move at all, right? So here's Hylion with this anchor of a cash position and not much else. Hyzon has sales. Hyzon has amazing technology, right? Hyzon shouldn't need help. And it's reflected in their website. If you go there, which I did before this video, I couldn't find any type of reciprocation at all in acknowledging that they're working on some sort of pilot program with Hylion while Hylion's out there running the Hyzon uh, rig around the test track. Um, you know, Hyzon, at least in their public facing forum, uh, has not disclosed whatsoever that they are uh, partnering with this company in Austin that nobody's heard of before. So um, a little bit. A little bit troublesome for me. Um, I'm not sure. I, you know, maybe they end up just blasting through it. Their expectations are down the line. I'm going to talk about the Hyzon project, and they've got some pretty short term um, expectations for that project, as opposed to Carno. They're kicking to 2026 for the Carno uh, ERX, right? Which I I think is a, a great idea, but definitely not one that I'm interested in now in the short to medium term to actually move the needle because moving the needle off of subpar stock prices really should, and if not uh, has already um, uh, put itself kind of at the top of the priority list. I mean, they can have all the initiatives in the world. They can go, you know, save the, the, the ice caps for all I care. It's not going to matter if the company goes out of business, right? Then they're going to all be sitting in a private company that has been delisted um, coming up with all these initiatives about how they save the world. At the end of the day, they have to deliver product that people want and people have to want those products. They have to want to integrate them and they have to really, we have to understand that that follow-on business will potentially be there longstanding for Hylion. Are we, are we there now? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Hylion is still struggling with providing that transparency into the future. Now, 
the transparency is there. It's just the follow through on that transparency in their roadmaps about how that's going to actually generate uh, top end and revenue and then potentially profit for the company. So, you know, I, they, they've got to follow through with these promises that are being made. Uh, the start of production, the start of production happens by the end of this year. Now, again, with four short months, the start of production was one that I saw. I acknowledged, look, I'm excited about, but my expectations from a scale of zero to 10 on start of production and what I think that means is zero. Maybe a one. I give it a one on the excitement scale. One, because they've said it. And one, because we've waited three years for the start of production, whatever that means. But what I think it means is most clearly articulated through John Panzer's address in, in the financials in that, yeah, they're going to produce low volume trucks, but they're not going to make a dime on it. Now, the one comes from every truck that they do turn out, there should be some follow on value that is made. But I focus on the word production, and, and I always invested in Hylion to be a tier one supplier to the OEM, not to be a, a producer of trucks, i.e. buying the trucks from Peterbilt and then outfitting the trucks in Austin, shipping them back to Peterbilt. It, it kind of sounds like, forgive my French, it's a clown show um, that is not efficient. Um, and I, I'm certain that the board of directors probably sat across from each other and, and looked at each other and said, yeah, I mean, this is a clown show, but we're, we're going to do it because this is the only way we can do it because Peter built really hasn't brought us in under their envelope. I, I'm kind of piecing together what I've gleaned from what this start of production is going to mean. And anything less than coming off of the OEM line for me um, and very little transparency about the mod center, which is supposed to be the intermediary step to getting onto that line. We have been provided very, very little uh, transparency outside of initially we're going to integrate with the OEMs. And now it's very difficult to integrate with the OEMs, right? So the story has changed uh, immensely to it being just an easy like handshake. And now it's one of the most impossible things you can possibly do. And oh, by the way, don't be surprised if we don't make it. And that's kind of the idea that I get. Uh, if Hyleon becomes a tier one supplier to Peterbilt, game over. Game over. Yeah, it's watermelon time. Um, do I have hopes that that will actually happen? No, not not now. Not based on, you know, the the the, the discussions and and what is what is in it for Peterbilt. Um, I could give you a bull bear case on what's in it for Peterbilt. I could give you a long list on both sides of the house. Yeah, there's mandates that need to be met, but why does Hylion have to be the chosen neon green horse that that makes those mandates achievable for for Peterbilt? Peterbilt has a hundred year reputation. And they're not going to tarnish that reputation by going into business with Hylion because Hylion says they're the best leader of powertrain solutions in the industry. They're going to have to prove it. Um, and Hylion's ability to prove things thus far uh, has been subpar at best. All right. Now, I'm, I'm being a little, a, a little bit scathing here on what they would suggest that the start of production would mean. Because it's a far cry from what they said the start of production was going to look like when those projections were made in 2020. But here we are. All that aside, the start of production will happen by the end of this year. What that looks like, I have no idea. Will it move the needle on this company? Probably not. It's the same old song and dance, guys. I'm trying to condition your expectations to understand that we are not in um, uh, um, hallelujah mode yet. Okay, we are not in jump and jump up and down mode. We are in wait and see mo mode, and be very, very careful and calculated with um, monitoring this company that I believe is extremely vulnerable. Extremely vulnerable. Okay, they've got a cash position, yes, and that is the very insulation that provides them the the safety from this current situation from cutting into the flesh.
Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And until that starts to absorb away and we can really get some clarity on what we consider to be uh, positive moving forward, um, then, then I think it's just a wait and see game. Now, the start of production and something that I really want to bring to your attention as well, guys, is 10 million. 10 million. It was disclosed from my understanding during the investor conference. Those of you who were there can attest to this. We just came off of a quarter where they were able to generate 255, 235, 200 and something thousand dollars. See, it doesn't matter. Um, it could be three, four hundred thousand. It could be a hundred thousand. It doesn't matter. Why? Because it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, 10 million? 10 million matters. 10 million matters. Okay, for the year's end 2023. Now, if we're at the end of 2024 and they're projecting 10 million, we're in trouble. We are in trouble. And I would put about a 16 month, 14 month or so time frame, give them all of 2024 and the remainder of 2023. So 16 months to really get their act together. Uh, 10 million is an indication of going in the right direction with revenue projections. Okay. We're not even talking about profit with this company. And I'm just going to make a bold statement to suggest this. If, if this small company um, cannot get out of its own way to generate $150 million of revenue, then this project is for naught. It is a waste of everybody's time. It is a waste of material. It is a waste of manpower. It's a waste of initiative. It is a waste of technology. It is a waste of everything we have come to know about our industrial companies. If the onslaught and the attack of this company has driven it so far down that it has it can't gain any favor in the market whatsoever, then all fair is love and war, in war because Hylion was once valued uh, in, in the billions of dollars Okay, on the initial run-up. Do I think it has the potential to get back there? 100%. Will we have the ability to look back on this time now and kind of kind of remember that 10 million projection in 2023 and say, wow, you know, the company is finally starting to uh, proceed toward that billion dollar revenue mark uh, and finally come to a nice profitability mark, which profitability for the company should come around that break even you know 150 200 300 400 let's just call it 500 million of revenue so 500 million of revenue capex and starting to expand out on the margins yeah there could be some some profit there and some um, refortification of the cash position uh, with the books and i think john panzer is just the guy to do that i think he's super sharp he understands businesses and one thing i <clears throat> will commend both Thomas and John on. I don't I don't sense at all that there is um any type of angst. I don't I don't sense that there's a sense of urgency we're here with this project. It's just we are where we are. And I think they're giving their best account of where we are in what I agree with them is being a very, very tough market. Very tough market. All that aside. $10 million will be achieved. Now, if they overachieve, like they underachieved the last quarter on their quarterly projections, I think that's going to be a problem for the company. I think if they come back and they close out the year at $7.7 .7 million and they say, see, I told you year over year sequentially we're up, but we can't project our own revenue projections, I think that's going to be problematic. So they better hit the number. And I I, I would suggest perhaps maybe that Hylion is probably due for a beat. So if they come in with 12.2 million, I think that will probably be good in consequential in moving the needle as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but when they do report the number, it will be actually on the books and not a projection that was made at an investor conference. But all that aside, I expect to be taking highly on at its word and closing out 2023 with a $10 million bill. I like that. I think it's great. I think when you track, it's funny, you go back and look at NVIDIA when their uh, company first started, um, their 
profits were, I think they started with 5 million. I think they bumped up to like 17 million. Then they went all the way back to 5 million. Then I think they reported out a number less than 5 million, if I'm not mistaken. And, you know, since then they've, t- they've turned in hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars of, of, of revenues um, and profit uh, as well. But, you know, you kind of look at Hylion and you think how much of a pass do we give them as a young company in growing revenue um, and and eventually getting toward chopping down that that capex, you know, um, me personally, I kind of sit back and I sometimes think about and this is Ryan's perspective. What a what a colossal waste of time, energy, money, initial investment, uh, all of the aboard. What a colossal waste if if this company was doomed from the beginning. In, in other words. Wouldn't you think that these guys have a a realistic expectation of what they think they can achieve when they sit across from the board who's supposed to be giving them strategic direction? Don't they feel like they've got a better handle on the marketplace to understand that this company actually has a better chance of succeeding than failing? Um, Wouldn't you think that the total addressable market would help kind of facilitate and and allow highly on yeah to get out of their own way, which is what they need to do, but also catch a break, catch a break. In that I have contended along this way that the highly on story and the highly on opportunity and their product is better in the marketplace than not in the marketplace. And it's it's interesting to me some of the schools of thought that would just have this company uh, uh, fail. Uh, because of what uh, a stock position that they were hurt on, or they think that somehow it's not better for the environment, or Thomas Healy's a bad guy, or you know, I I just I think the world is a better off place with this company rather than without it. And when I talk about you know 150 million dollars of of capex to cover expenditures, the way that they're that will increase over time, right? You would expect that those revenue projections to increase relative to their to their operating expenditures and capital expenditures going forward. But boy, oh boy, like I said, if we can't cover 150 million dollars, then what are we doing? I mean, this is supposed to be an industrial company. This is not a pink sheet company. This company trades on the nice. You know, um, I think the prospects are there. I think they've been given a, a a really wide swath in the stock market, and Hylion needs to deliver. They really do. The day cap variant uh, to meet the ACF early mandate. I think this was a pretty cool initiative. This was the one thing that I put on the list here that I don't expect a lot of um, a lot of progress on. If I get it, I'll be excited. That way they can meet that short fuse mandate that I believe is coming in 2024. You guys can uh, check me if you'd like um, in California to to start to deliver those. I think with the learnings of what has gone on over the last three years should make the day cab variant a little bit more um, easily attainable, right? I, I don't expect that, you know, once the certification is met for Hylion, um, that those certifications wouldn't just be a, a, a reiteration of the same certification for the day cab. I don't know. I'm not an expert on the certification process, but I would expect that those processes be a little more streamlined. And I would expect that the day cab variant actually to be uh, an easier build. I don't know if that's a fair statement or not. Um, But I often said, I said this many, many, a couple of years ago, actually. And for you guys that have been with me a long time on this highly on community, I will double down on this. Uh, highly on one year from now and ten, five years from now will be a completely different company than what we are evaluating now. Make no mistake, w- making your uh, uh, presumptions now based on what you know about the company is only making uh, assessments or projections on where you think they will end up. And if nothing else, highly on has proven their ability to kind of come over the top with things that were not expected, uh, uh, the day cab, uh, Klarna technology, the collaboration with Hyzon and integrating a uh, fuel cell and actually grabbing that market right there. Um, those things were not expected. Those things were um, not 
we were not privy to that in 2020 and 2021 when this company started and embarked on this journey. So I'm reporting out to you now on a company based on my best assessment here on 2023. Um, but it is fair to acknowledge that this company has been opportunistic about, you know, taking on a Carno acquisition. They've been opportunistic about, you know, uh, 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 establishing another SKU of the ERX line, couple of SKUs. Um, you know, that Carno generator wasn't supposed to, it was just supposed to be an agnostic generator is what they called it. And I think they knew about Carno at the time. It just hadn't been announced. So that was what we were making decisions on. Um, you know, the the hydrogen fuel cell iteration of the RX was just that. Now we have color on, you know, what that product is going to look like, i.e. the release this week of driving the test track at, at the Toyota facility. That stuff's very, very exciting. So it becomes a lot more real when we start to look at those projections and we start to kind of formulate where this company could potentially be. But the day cab is one thing that I thought we would mention as far as, you know, expect the unexpected uh, and and highly on is poised to surprise to the upside. And, and uh, I'll be eagerly awaiting updates on the day cab variant, early stationary power deployments in 2024. So let's talk Carno for just a second. I'm not going to belinger this point. But all things aside, you can say what you want. I tweeted, I want a, I want a Carnot generator. Um, I want one. Um, if I get wealthy off of this project, I think we should all buy one, all of us. Let's all buy some property off the grid and we can all film our experience with the, with the Carnot generator. This is why you watch me. I have vision. Um, I have vision. Um, I live in my vision. Mm-hmm. Day to day, I'm just a regular fella. Um, but if this ends up making it, I would love to have a Carno generator at my property uh, to help provide the power to um, vital services that I expect to have around the house. Pool, hot tub, um, household uh, power demand, both DC and AC applications, right? I want one. Um, and I would overbuy it. I would buy enough power to power me to rapture. All that aside, I believe that the Carnot generator in the first iteration is coming in stationary power deployments in 2024. Why do I believe that? Because they've told me that's what's happening. That's next year. As an investor, I'm totally fine with that. Most of my projects for long-term microcap investing are multi-years out. So why is Hylion any different? Hylion's cool because I can really just track the progress. And I bounce from microcap to microcap and you know assess catalyst when they happen. Most days you hear crickets, right? Because they're working behind the scenes doing what it is that they do. But when the microcap has a development, it's usually a big development. I'm waiting on a couple of those developments on a couple of other stories that I cover. But these, um, this catalyst, I believe, is actually uh, a foregone conclusion. And who's to suggest that it's not going to flip the script on this? Uh, even with that, I say that my expectations are muted uh, to, to non-existent. Will it move the needle? Of course not. Of course not. Why Why do we need stationary uh, generators? We have Generac. We don't need uh, to advance technology. Um, we stopped advancing technology in this country 40 years ago, and we've made it so difficult for new country, uh, new companies to come to bear with new technology, and we stymie progress as much as we can. That's just what we've written now. So why would we need this product? We don't need it. Just keep the aging infrastructure. We haven't upgraded our infrastructure for 50 years. Mm -hmm. Why would we need this product? Why would somebody need to actually find a, a, an opportunity to lower the cost of their utility bill when in fact most households in California are actually under the thumb of the utility companies to operate their uh, outlets and operate their, um, their power uh, during optimal times to do just that? Guys, that's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Can the Carno solve that? Yeah, can it can solve it, but that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. What matters is the political pressure, the political initiatives, um, whatever foul play is going on with this company, whatever manufacturing of attacks on this company is out there. 
um, has really just put us into the position of where we are, where Hylian's just going to have to fight. And that's all in love and war, baby. They're just going to have to fight. And they're going to have to find a way out of this hole. And I believe that they have enough prospects to do just that. The Hyzon collaboration uh, complete in 2023, late 2023. So the test track provided some insight that that is actually an up and running uh, fuel cell iteration of the ERX. Did it move the needle? Of course not. Of course not. <clears throat> we can all uh, hold hands and sing Kumbaya in that we all own the only stock in the entire stock market that actually doesn't go up. <clears throat> I've come to terms with that. No big deal. Um, Hylion has just uh, provided some insight to their hydrogen fuel cell iteration that um, could potentially be another skew in their product line for class eight trucking. All that aside, do I expect it to move the needle? No, not at all. Not at all. Um, I expect to be around these levels indefinitely. I expect Hylion to be turning out that 500 million in revenues um, and still trading at $1.25. I expect them to be a tier one supplier to Peterbilt and still uh, at the $1.25 level. Um, I expect them to have stationary power deployed. All of these catalysts that I'm talking about, uh, certifications reached, uh, milestones achieved, and still trading at $1.25. Absolutely. And again, we can all continue to hold hands around this project and uh, wonder what what is, what is happening. But uh, um, the last thing I will mention here is something that I want you to guys to consider in way of their cash position. They're currently sitting at 275. Uh, by the end of the, the year, they'll be at 275 on their cash burn. Projecting 150 million, um, get them through next year and even through 2025 uh, by all intents and purposes. They're not burning cash as fast as everybody says that they are. And that cash position has really been quite a lifesaver. Unfortunately, a detriment to the company now, I'll explain. If they're burning against a cash position, unfortunately, that cash position takes on a different light in that it's looked at negatively and not as a positive, okay? Now, the 10 million will be turned in in 2023, like I talked about. If they can increase that to 25 million, which lofty, I get it. I'm a douchebag. I get it. 25 million. Okay, come up with your own. 12 and a half million. Six and a half million. <laughs> They're going to lose money next year. I don't, I don't know. 25 million. All right. The more revenues that they can make and generate on the top end, the more that cash position transitions to a position of strength rather than a deteriorating asset. Okay. And I'd really like to see Hylion come to a an impasse where they actually start to generate revenues. I think they're too close for comfort right now. Um, they seem to think they're all right. That's no big deal. We can fund the business and we can just go to the marketplace and, and or dilute shareholders um, who have, quite frankly, um, been singing Kumbaya for three years, and that's about it. Um, so we're going to dilute shareholders even more. And that's a that's a good thing. And we can just remain calm on it. It's no problem because I'm pulling in a hefty salary, which is kind of a thorn in my side. I, I think even Thomas Healy is in a prove it phase right now with the company. I really do. Um, I think pulling in over a million dollar salary is absurd. I, I, I think to produce the results that have been produced hasn't been his fault. But in all fairness, you know, you need to be compensated on results. You really do. Um, and to drag this story out three, four million dollars later after four million, uh, four years and four million of salary payouts to produce what? Um, you know, that's half of what they're anticipating generating for top end revenue this year, 10 million. Um, I, I think that's a little bit absurd, but that's just my opinion on it. But I'd like to see the sentiment from what is now perceived to be a negative, actually. They keep reiterating that their cash position is strong and the marketplace keeps coming back and saying, yeah, but you're you're, you're deteriorating your cash position at such an accelerated rate relative to your um projected revenues. And I think once those projected revenues kind of start to materialize a little bit, I think we can look at that cash position with a little different lens. So with that, guys, I wanted you to expect the unexpected. 
all things aside, was the theme of this um, when we talk about presumptuous and I'm a really bad guy and I'm a really bad investor, all that aside, okay? These catalysts are coming. Whether or not you decide to take a position in Hylion or not is totally up to you, all right? Totally up to you. Um, your position in Hylion doesn't affect me, nor do I expect my position in Hylion to affect you, all right? This has to be, you have to be fair about this relationship. This is business, all right. A lot of people will come and they'll blame me for, uh, you know, uh, not putting food on the table for you because of your misguidance of of, of a particular position. Um, most people are like that. Most people want to blame others for their problems and and not really just look diplomatically at where we currently sit now, with the looming catalyst on the horizon, and expect that potentially I could be wrong in suggesting that it does not move the needle as opposed to it will move the needle. And we're just going to have to wait and see on this. My friends continue to be patient on this project. If you enjoy the message, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments at the bottom of this video. I appreciate each and every one of you and your support that is rendered week to week. We'll be back next week for the Hylion weekly update. Guys, take it easy and good luck in your investment future. <laughs>